Let's talk about electron quantum numbers. So what quantum numbers do is they give you the relative location and energy of electrons within an atom. And so there are four of them for each electron that describe its position and energy um, and its orbital. And there's a few things we need to say about the periodic table and quantum numbers in general before we get started here. Number one, the periodic table is organized to let you know what quantum numbers are in the ground state of any atom. Okay, that's the atom's electron configuration. They're organized by block, as we're going to see. But every atom really has every orbital, just not all of the orbitals are occupied in the ground state. So that's something to keep in mind, that the orbitals exist. There just aren't inhabitants, like electrons, that are living in the orbitals in the ground state of all atoms. The larger the atom, the, more, the higher the atomic number, the more electrons occupy these orbitals, but they're there even if they're not being used. And the Pauli principle says no two electrons can have the same set of quantum numbers. So any three of the four can be the same or any combination other than you can't have all four be the same. In addition, we have a few other rules. So the principal quantum number that we have labeled in here is um, organized on the periodic table for elements that have electrons in these orbitals by its row of the periodic table. So this is analogous to the Bohr model of the atom going from energy level one, the shell one, which is shown here by this inner circle here, and then level two, level three, level four. So every time you jump a row, you're adding electrons into an entirely new shell of valence electrons, the valence electrons being the outermost shell electron set. And this condition is, for whatever row you're on, the type of orbital that you have, L here, can only go from zero to n minus one. For example, if we look at the first row of the periodic table, it can only have L equals zero, which is an s orbital. And so we only have an s in row one, but in uh, row two, for n equals um, two, we have L equals zero, or we have L equals one. And that means s and p orbitals can exist in row two in the second shell. Doesn't mean there's electrons there, it just means the orbitals can exist of those types in the shell. An s orbital looks like a sphere, p orbital looks like a dumbbell shape. Okay, so we've seen the pictures, look up the pictures in your textbook. Um, in principal energy level three, now all of a sudden, n minus one, three minus one is two, and those are d orbitals. So we can have s, p, and d orbitals are allowed for row three, and then for L equals three, um, and the fourth energy level, we have where all four types of orbitals can exist, S, P, D, and F. And so five would have S, P, D, and F, and theoretically G orbitals, which are not uh, filled to our knowledge um, in a ground state electron configurations of any, of any known element. Okay, so at the point which we're at the four F, we can continue on from there. And so we're organized on the periodic table here into blocks where L equals zero, we have S, and then the next encountered is P for L equals one, the D block here and then F are filled in order as we'll see for electron configuration, okay? But as far as physical space, where are they located? They're located in the shells that are given by the principal number and then the shapes of the orbitals, what orbital type we have, whether it's S, P, D, or F, is given by L, the angular momentum quantum number. The magnetic quantum number is next, M sub L, and it can go from negative L to positive L, depending on which orbital type that we're given. And so if we look at that, for P, or for S, excuse me, we have zero as our quantum number for angular momentum, and we are allowed to have negative zero to positive zero. Well, that's just zero here for m sub l. And then we have uh, l is equal to one. Well, we can go from negative one 
to positive 1, so three different orbitals. We show those in block diagrams as orbitals where electrons can be added to them. And I'll actually move those here as we're about to talk about spin in just a moment. Well, for D, we can go negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, because L equals 2, M sub L, which orbital are we in? Well, we can be in one of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 orbitals of a given type here, of the, the D electrons. And then finally, for F, we can go negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. That's a total of 7. I can draw a straight line here as close as we can get there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so for the final quantum number, whether an electron has a spin up of a half or down, we indicate by plus an arrow, minus an arrow. That's just another way of saying plus or minus a half for the spin. And every orbital can have its own two electrons which we should technically fill one at a time. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, as we'll see for filling orbitals, but also for electron configuration if we fill. That F orbitals, we have seven orbitals that would fill up to a maximum of 14 electrons in those F orbitals, in the F uh, block, as it were. So let's take this idea of F orbitals have seven orbitals per row. D orbitals have five orbitals per row, three orbitals for, for P, one orbital for S. Let's look at the periodic table and see how that stacks up. So for S, helium should technically be here for purposes of um, electron addition. But we have one orbital, spin up, down, doesn't matter which is which. But as we're filling the ground state of electrons, we um, can use the periodic table as a guide. Although, again, every orbital has every, or every atom has every orbital, but the ground state only fills orbitals um, that are lowest in energy for our, for our um, atom. And so if we look at the S block, it's always too wide because only one orbital can exist because negative L to positive L is negative zero to positive, well, that's just zero, so only one orbital exists. We just said three orbitals exist for P, one, two, three. So spin up, spin down. And again, we should be filling one at a time in each one there. Um, but we can look at that again when we talk about Hund's rule in electron configuration orbital adding um, diagrams. And in the D orbitals, there's 10 two electrons in each orbital, five total orbitals. There's one, two, three, four, five. But the quantum numbers, again, are negative two to positive two, but a total of five. And then finally, for the F block, 14, but every two is a different orbital. As we're filling up to a total of seven orbitals, 14 electrons in each row of the F block of the periodic table.